You hear the word presence around the spiritual community, the self-help community, and the psychology community. But what does presence mean exactly? I want you to imagine that what we call God or Source is really nothing more than aware essence or sentient energy. It is pure collective consciousness. This sentient essence has the capacity to both create with the energy that comprises itself as well as to perceive itself. You are essentially its creation, but you have been created from its own energy because there is nothing that is not it. To understand more about this, watch my video titled Oneness is Not the Ultimate Truth of This Universe. This sentient essence not only created the world that you live in, the universe itself, but also you within the universe. It's a bit like a painter painting with an aspect of itself, so you are indivisible from what we are calling Source or God. You are simply an aspect of it projected into the third dimensional reality, which it also created. Anytime you focus on something, what you are focusing is that sentient essence. So you focusing on something is essentially God or Source itself focusing on something. And what we have to become aware of is that the vibration of that consciousness is innately healing in and of itself. When we are present with something, it means that we focus that sentient essence with all of our attention onto that thing without any intention to change it, just to be with it completely. The healing power of presence cannot be underestimated. It creates an alchemical process in the thing that you are being present with. This is why masters of your time-space reality seldom need to open their mouth to talk. That's just an addition to what's actually causing change within people, which is simply sharing their energy field. Beings who have mastered the art of presence do not need to teach. All they need to do is to be near you, and it creates an alchemical process by which you become more of what you really are. In previous seminars and videos, I taught how to be present with emotions. To learn more about this, watch my video titled How to Heal the Emotional Body. I have also introduced you in previous videos to the concept of somatic experience. Now we have to understand that as we are interacting with our world, we are perceiving all kinds of things through our senses. We are experiencing the world primarily through sensations. Now a sensation is a somatic event. For example, if you hit your leg on a table, you feel different sensations in your leg. If someone breaks up with you, you experience that grief as different sensations in your whole body, especially your chest. These different sensations are somatic experiences. They happen relative to the body and or being. Emotions are felt as sensations. Thoughts can come as sensations. Auditory aspects can come as sensations. And visual components can come as sensations. By far, one of the most powerful healing experiences you can have is when you stop what you're doing. You turn your attention inwards towards your body and your being, and you remain completely unconditionally present with the somatic experiences that are taking place with you. When we do this, we want to make sure that when we are completely present with ourselves, we don't do it with an attitude like we're trying to change or fix something. We're not trying to create any change at all. To be unconditionally present with something and to want to change something is a contradiction in terms. Usually, when it feels like we are focusing our sentient energy, or focusing our attention on something, it feels somatically <clears throat> like what we are doing is we're taking all of the energy collected in our head area, which we usually associate with our mind, and we are taking that down into the body or out into the world. That's what focusing usually feels like. What we usually miss is that we can in fact take all of our focus and we can direct that sentient essence or energy to the mind itself and to the brain, which is a bit like a computer or a translator between the non-physical aspect of ourselves and the physical aspect of ourselves. What we also usually miss is that our mind itself can be perceived by us as a somatic experience. And by approaching our mind in this way, it has massive implications for healing. To do this process, 
I want you to close your eyes and take all of your attention to your mind. Usually most people associate their mind with their head area or even sometimes just outside their head. Imagine that your capacity to think as well as the thoughts you think reside in that area. Just be very still observing and being totally with and immersed in this part of yourself. Step two, care about what is taking place in this part of yourself by seeing it and knowing it is valid and important. No matter how this part of you presents itself, there is a very valid reason why. Step three, allow yourself to drop into this internal journey work process. Perceive what is occurring in this place of your mind empathetically and with open curiosity. Do not seek to change anything about it. Study it. Seek to allow it completely. Become aware of any experience that comes with doing this. What do you notice? What images come to you? Do you notice any textures or colors or movements? What sensations occur? Do you notice any thoughts arising? Do you notice any sounds or smells or tastes? Can you see which ones want to stay around a while and which ones come and float away? Does any awareness or insight come to you as a result of being completely present with this part of yourself? Four, this one's the hardest. Sit and be completely present with and perceiving completely this aspect of yourself that we could call your mind and all things related to your mind with absolutely no intention to change it whatsoever. That means if what you are experiencing is highly uncomfortable, do nothing with that discomfort except for be with the discomfort. You can do this process for anywhere between 11 minutes and days, which is what people do when they are practicing Vipassana meditation. Just bear witness to any changes that may occur as a result of you focusing your essence on that aspect of your being. Does anything shift? Does anything change? Does anything intensify? Does anything decrease? Don't forget to keep breathing. When we are with somatic experiences that are particularly intense, oftentimes we forget to keep breathing. Stay with this aspect of yourself that you call your mind for as long as you feel guided to do. And then you can stop the process there. I like to have people practice the art of being completely present with whatever is somatically occurring within their embodiment for a good deal of time before they take any further step. The reason is, is that in the very beginning we have a very, let's call it underdeveloped capacity to be present with other people and with ourselves and especially with uncomfortable experiences. We want to change it. We want to fix it. We want to do anything we can to get away from the experience. So being able to be completely present with something and to make space for even very uncomfortable sensations is a bit like exercising a muscle. To begin with, we can't lift very many pounds. After a while, it becomes a very developed muscle. And it is at that point that we can take this practice one step further. Once you are sure you can be unconditionally present and focus your sentient essence completely without resisting or needing it to change, you can go one step further by deliberately offering healing to your mind. To heal something is really quite simple. It is to experience the opposite. To understand more about this subject in depth, I ask you to watch my video titled, What is Healing? Now that you have fully experienced your own mind, chances are very high that you now understand what it is that your mind needs, what opposite experience it may be craving. Just watching the shifts that take place within it when exposed to your focused presence will tell you a lot about what improvement or healing actually is for it. And with that information, you can offer new thoughts, new feeling signatures or feeling flavors, new sounds, new smells, new tastes, new visuals, and new sensations to it. To understand more about feeling signatures, watch my video titled How to Feel Better, Feeling Signatures. Again, this is not about fixing anything. When you take something as part of yourself, it's not about trying to change it. What it is is that in loving that thing and taking it as part of yourself, in perceiving it completely, and therefore knowing what it wants and needs, we can then offer those things to it as a gesture of genuine love. 
So you can understand better how this type of inner journey work into your own mind might go, I'll give you an example of a man that I worked with lately. He closed his eyes as if going on an internal shamanic journey. When he put all of his attention up towards his mind, what he perceived was a tightening and a tingling sensation there. He was with that tingling and with that tightening for a while before he realized that outside of that tingling and that tension was in fact a kind of numbness, like a blanket settled over his whole mind. There was no movement. What he saw was the image of a deer hit by a car and on the side of the road. Intuitively he knew that this image was being communicated to him about the state his mind was in, which is shock. He suddenly watched a thought come to his mind that he must be in shock because someone in his business had turned against him earlier that week, who he never thought would be capable of such a thing. Ah, he must be frozen in that shock because he still can't understand why. That thought was very sticky. It stayed around, dominating the experience for a while, and then it began to fade. That numbness seemed to be dominating and controlling the inside of his mind and also extending about a foot around his head. He could also feel that numbness going down the right side of his face and neck, and even down into his clavicle area. He saw an image of his brain, but what struck him about this image is that he noticed he couldn't see or sense much activity in the channels of his mind. It was as if the electrical current going through his mind was frozen. He was completely present with a sensation of the control of that numbness. The numbness felt empty and cold. It looked light blue and felt like stale air with no movement to it. He sat with this numbness of his mind for ten minutes before holes began to form in the numbness. He said it felt like film strip being burnt. He felt like his focused essence dropped through the holes in that numbness as it was dissolving entirely, and he felt like he was in blackness. The blackness was also not moving. He said that what it felt like was futility, endedness. It was very difficult for him to stay with that feeling of futility and not try to move around or get away from it. Why is it so difficult for somebody to be with futility? Because obviously it feels futile to be with something that's futile. <laughs> he heard a voice inside his mind saying, This is pointless. This is pointless. There's no point to this over and over again. Instead of trying to argue with the voice or change the voice, he just let it keep speaking. He heard another thought arise unintentionally. It's okay if it's futile. I'll be here with you forever then. He saw an image of a cat curling up inside this dark futility, which now seemed more like a cave. The minute the cat did that, the sensation and experience changed. The darkness became warm. He sat in that warm, accompanied darkness, letting it permeate all the areas of his brain, all the areas of his mind. Each time it permeated into a thought, the thought itself burst. He sat with that warm darkness for about 20 minutes before he experienced a sensation of completeness, and he said he was ready to return. He could have stopped right there because it was a profoundly healing experience for his mind. But I decided to amplify this healing further. I asked him what he felt like based on this experience with his mind that his mind needed. And his answer was, I think my mind needs to know that it's not alone. What I've realized is that through the betrayal of this friend, I realize that I feel completely alone in that betrayal, which is even scarier because I feel like I have no understanding of it. So I asked him when was the time in his life that he felt the least alone, the most accompanied, when was a time that he felt like there would never be a time when he would be isolated? And his answer was, with his grandmother. So I had him mentally go back to the sensory experience of being held by his grandmother. He sat in this feeling for four minutes. At the end of the four minutes, I had him take that feeling signature of being with his grandmother and bring it up into his mind like an offering to that warm darkness. I also told him to offer the thought, I'm right here for you always, to his mind as well. A big smile spread across his face. The experience of his mind changed completely. The darkness started transforming to an orange sunset-colored light with a creamy texture. 
He could perceive movement slowly occurring in his brain. He watched the thought cross his mind. This is amazing! Emotionally, he felt a thousand times better. There was no tension in his mind. He sat unconditionally with that sensory experience for five minutes. And then when he felt fulfilled and when it felt right, he took a few breaths and opened his eyes. Being unconditionally present with any aspect of our being can provide so much healing for us. And it is, in fact, the key component to healing in and of itself. Us figuring out how to focus the divine presence, which not only makes us up, but also acts as the foundation of our own creation. Being completely unconditionally present with our mind has amazing implication for anybody who is experiencing mental illness or any ailment related to the mind, which is all people on earth. It has the capacity to change the way that we think and to change the way that our minds and brains function. Have a good week.